Today's lesson is fact or fiction: the truth behind animal idioms. Day two. Hi everyone, I'm Roger, and I'm Kelsey. And again today we're talking about animal idioms or phrases that have an animal's name in them to describe a certain kind of situation in the human world. Let's see here. Last time we talked about crocodile tears. We talked about being blind as a bat, and we talked about going at a snail's pace. And then there was another one. Which、uh, had to do with watching like a hawk. If you're really paying attention to something, so、uh, the one about the hawk and the snail were actually accurate. It's true, hawks are very perceptive and snails move slow. But the ones about the bat and the crocodile were not exactly true. Yeah. So we said blind as a bat is an idiom. However. Bats can actually find their way around, or they can navigate pretty well. Although they don't use their eyes, they use echolocation. But saying someone's blind as a bat, or they can't see something very obvious, doesn't really ring true with bats. And then we also had the one about crocodiles that we would say crocodile tears if someone is being fake; they're pretending to feel grief or feel empathy or something for someone else. And this came from the fact that crocodiles seem to shed tears after they kill their prey. So, people saw this. They saw some liquid, some water coming out of their eyes, and they thought they looked like tears. So they said, "Oh, crocodiles are pretending to be sad after they kill their prey because we know that they enjoy eating that prey. So they must be pretending." And that's where this phrase came from. However, of course. Crocodiles aren't actually feeling emotions when they're killing their prey; they're just focusing on needing to eat. So this isn't true either. That's right. So of course, those animals we were talking about last time are wild animals like hawks and snails and crocodiles and animals like that. But today, we're going to talk about animals that are kept at home or on a farm and find out what some of those phrases are all about. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson right now. Some other false idioms feature domesticated rather than wild animals. One of these focuses on dogs and goes, "You can't teach an old dog new tricks." The suggestion here is that older people cannot learn new things. But while learning may not be as easy for these people, no humans or dogs, for that matter, ever stop learning. In fact, keeping the brain stimulated can actually minimize the negative effects of aging on memory and learning ability. 大家好，今天第一个单词我们看到的是 domesticate 这个字当做动词，代表驯养、驯化动物的意思。例如 ，In the past, tigers were domesticated to perform in the circus. 在过去，驯养老虎是为了马戏团表演。接下来我们看到的单词是 suggestion。这个字当做名词，它有暗示或是征兆、迹象的意思。所以，我们可以说 ，Mary was angry at the suggestion that her husband betrayed her. Mary 很愤怒地发现她老公背叛她的征兆。再来，我们看到的单词是 stimulate。这个字当做动词，代表刺激或是激励的意思。例如 ，Some believe the herbal remedy stimulates the immune system. 有些人相信草药可以刺激免疫系统。Okay, welcome back, everybody, and it's time for the first part of our lesson. So, we had already heard about some wild animal idioms, and it's time to hear about some different animals. So, some other false idioms feature domesticated rather than wild animals. So, this word "domesticated" is basically tamed or kept as a pet. So, a domesticated animal is one that is tamed and is kept as a pet or on a farm, and This is the opposite of wild, right? And domesticate again is a verb. It talks about taming an animal and keeping it as a pet or keeping it on a farm. And do not confuse this word with domestic, which refers to something in the country. 
as opposed to being international. This、uh, is a different word here to domesticate, or to have domesticated animals means that the animals are at home. And they're not in the wild, running free. Okay, so one of these focuses on dogs, which of course a lot of people keep as pets. And this phrase goes: "You can't teach an old dog new tricks." I've heard that phrase before. I have as well. This is a pretty common idiom in English, and the suggestion here is that older people cannot learn new things. So a suggestion is. An implication—it's something that implies or suggests a certain fact. So here we're suggesting or hinting that older people can't learn new things. I don't know if this is true of dogs, but of course, when we get puppies, the first thing we want to do is to teach them tricks. And gee, what are some tricks that dogs can do? They can sit, right? Yeah, maybe sit or shake a paw or come. Those kind of tricks are pretty common to teach to puppies. But then some people say, as dogs get older, maybe they're not as able to learn.、Mm-hmm. They're unwilling. Maybe they're a little more lazy or something. So you can't teach them to say jump over a fence or to fetch a stick or catch a frisbee or something like that. Those are some tricks that younger dogs can do, but older dogs would rather just sit still and take a nap. So the suggestion here, as you said, means that older people cannot learn new things. Suggestion is the noun form of the verb to suggest. Usually, that means that somebody has something to offer you in terms of information. I suggest that you take the number two freeway today because the number one freeway is just a mess. That's my suggestion. But yes, is it true older people cannot learn new things? Well, let's find out. So the next sentence says, "But while learning may not be as easy for these people." No humans or dogs, for that matter, ever stop learning. So, although learning may be harder for older people or older animals, they never stop learning. And we have this phrase here, "for that matter," and this phrase is used to show that something is as relevant as the first thing that you talked about, even though it's mentioned second. This is basically a way to emphasize or add more information to whatever you're talking about. Absolutely. So I think it is true that older people tend to be kind of set in their ways. They are unwilling to learn new things, but、uh, that does not mean they can't learn new things.、Uh, like my grandfather was 95 years old, and he decided to take up needlepoint of all things, which means you take、uh, you know some kind of yarn or something and make pictures using a pattern or something like that. So he was kind of bored in his retirement, so he took up needlepoint. So at least、uh, that's not true here. If you're willing, I'm sure you can learn new things. It's、uh, not as easy for older people or for dogs, but Still, everybody keeps on learning. And if you want to mention something else inside of a sentence when you're talking about one particular subject, and you want to mention something else, you say "for that matter." So, for example, I could say, "I don't like to eat salad or any vegetables for that matter." So, salad there is usually a kind of dish that includes a lot of vegetables. So, while I'm talking about salads, I could also talk about vegetables. I don't like salads, and I don't like vegetables for that matter. I don't like vegetables either. So, older people can still learn things. In fact, keeping the brain stimulated can actually minimize the negative effects of aging on memory and learning ability. So, keeping the brain stimulated. So, stimulate here. If you keep something stimulated, you keep it active. Or encourage development of that thing. So, if you keep your brain stimulated, you keep using it, and you encourage it to keep developing or keep learning things. You could also keep children stimulated. So, you could keep children interested and active, and making sure that their brain is stimulated and active as well. I like to study languages to keep my brain stimulated. For example. And again, this can minimize the negative effects of aging on memory and learning ability. So yes, keep your mind active, keep learning new things, and you can live to be 110 years old. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on to the next part now. Yet another idiom that is based on mistaken belief is the expression "stubborn as a mule." While it's true that mules can refuse to work. 
and will quite literally dig their heels in to prevent being led somewhere they don't want to go, there is more to this behavior than personality. Research has shown that mules are actually quite willing to learn and perform tasks. They even rank higher than dogs when it comes to ability to learn. Their reputation for stubbornness is therefore probably a result of their intelligence. Mules know their limits and will refuse to perform tasks that cause them discomfort or put them in danger. 第二部分我们看到的单词是 mistake， 这个字当做动词，它有误解、搞错的意思。例如 ，Peter 把那幅画误认成照片。英文可以这么说 ：Peter mistook the painting for a photo。再来，我们看到的单词是 reputation， 这个字当做名词，它有名声、名誉的意思。所以我们可以说 ：Bob has an honest reputation， so I feel comfortable doing business with him。Bob 有着诚信的名声，所以跟他做生意，我感到很安心。今天最后一个单字，我们看到的是 discomfort。这个字当做名词，它有不舒服、不适的意思。例如 ，The patient had some discomfort, so he rang the emergency bell to call the doctors and nurses. 那名病人感到不适，所以他按紧急铃呼叫医生和护士。Welcome back, everybody, and it's time for the second part of our lesson. So we had just talked about an idiom about a domesticated animal, about dogs. So you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and it's time to find out some more idioms. So yet another idiom that is based on mistaken belief is the expression "stubborn as a mule." So mistaken, this word means incorrect, wrong, or based on a misunderstanding. So. Another idiom that is wrong or incorrect is the expression "stubborn as a mule." Indeed. Now, here the word "mule" might be unfamiliar to our listeners.、Uh, it's basically、uh, the offspring of a donkey and a horse, although the donkey needs to be male and the horse needs to be a female. It's kind of a cross between a horse. And a donkey, and we say that、uh, mules are stubborn; they don't like to do stuff. And we can describe maybe our grandmother. Oh, she's as stubborn as a mule; she just doesn't change her mind. But this idiom is kind of mistaken. Remember, we're talking about idioms that might be true, might be accurate in the animal kingdom, and ones that might not be true. This one seems to be mistaken. If you're mistaken, that means you're wrong. You must be mistaken. I am not your cousin. Alan, I just happen to look just like him. And while it's true that mules can refuse to work and will quite literally dig their heels in to prevent being led somewhere they don't want to go, there is more to this behavior than personality. So mules can or often refuse to work, and they will quite literally dig their heels in. So we have another kind of. Phrase or idiom here, dig their heels in, and that means that they are going to insist or they are going to resist something. So they don't want to do something; they're not going to do it. Uh, we do have this phrase to dig your heels in. Usually, it's figurative. We're not really pushing our feet into the ground, so we don't have to move. We'll say that、uh, if we're not changing our opinion or if we refuse to go somewhere, I don't want to go to the basketball game. I'm going to dig my heels in here. I hate basketball. I think it's a really silly sport. But in this case, we're saying they literally dig their heels in. These、uh, mules actually push their feet. Into the ground to prevent being led somewhere they don't want to go. No, I do not want to go over to that trough and drink water. I'm not thirsty, and I'm not going over there. And you can't make me. So yes, literally, they dig their heels in, try to make me go over there. I dare you. Yes, and they say that there's more to this behavior than personality. So while you might think that this is just The personality of mules—they just don't feel like doing something, so they refuse to do it. There is more to it than that, so there is more of an explanation to this behavior than just personality. And research has shown that mules are actually quite willing to learn and perform tasks. So although we think of them as stubborn and they don't want to do things, they're actually quite willing to learn and perform tasks. And they even rank higher than dogs when it comes to ability to learn. 
So that's pretty impressive. We always think of dogs as being very easy to train, but it turns out that mules are actually also very able to learn. I bet you can't teach a mule how to catch a frisbee, though. But in any case, they can probably learn other things, and their reputation for stubbornness is therefore probably a result of their intelligence. So yes, they have this reputation, which means people believe this about them based on what other people have said. Usually, you might have a good reputation. Oh, Charles has a good reputation for helping people. He's a really nice guy. He's very generous. So if you need some. Something, hey, you can call him because he's got a good reputation. Yep, or maybe a teacher at your school is known by a lot of students for being really tough, and that teacher would have a reputation for being tough. So everyone talks about this teacher and says, "Oh, her class is so hard; it's really difficult." So the teacher has a reputation for being tough. Indeed. So yeah, you don't want to have a tough teacher. Well, maybe you do, because if you have a tough teacher, they'll actually bring out the best in you. But again, the point we're trying to make here is that mules are not as stubborn as people believe them to be. They can be stubborn in some situations, but in other situations, hey, they can learn a lot. And of course, this、uh, stubbornness is because of their intelligence. They know their limits, and they will refuse to perform tasks that cause them discomfort or put them in danger. It means they're smart. No, I'm not going to go out there and pull the plow because the last time I did that, my hoofs were sore for four or five days, and I had to soak them in water, put ice on them, and I don't want to go through that hell again. Yeah, so discomfort here means something that causes someone to feel uncomfortable. It could be slight pain or worry or even embarrassment, and it's just anything that's the opposite of comfort. And with that, we're going to move on to the third part of our lesson. Let's take a listen now. As these examples indicate, idioms about animals may be useful for cleverly expressing a situation. However, a literal understanding of the words does not always accurately represent what's going on. Okay, welcome back, everybody, and it's time for the last part of our lesson. So, as these examples indicate, idioms about animals may be useful for cleverly expressing a situation. So, we've heard about a lot of examples, and these idioms about animals. Can in fact be useful when you want to express a situation. However, a literal understanding of the words does not always accurately represent what's going on. Right. So, of course, we advise all of you to carefully scrutinize all of the animal idioms that you use in everyday conversation and make sure you're using them correctly. Because if you don't, you're probably going to get some naturalist after you, and they're going to say, "No, you're wrong about bats. They actually aren't blind, but snails indeed are slow." You're right about that. Okay. That brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. Good 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第一部分有一个句子是 ，But while learning may not be as easy for these people, no humans or dogs, for that matter, ever stop learning. 但尽管对这些人来说，学习也许没有那么容易，但没有人或是狗也同样是如此。曾经停止学习。这边要介绍的一个用语是 for that matter， 这表示而且同样。for that matter 字面上的意思是就那一点而言。那个 that 就是指先前提到的内容，所以这个用语就可以表达出另外一件事也是像先前所说的情况一样。举例来说 ，I haven't seen Kelly for years。Or her sister, either, for that matter. 我已经很多年没有见到 Kelly， 她姐姐同样也是很多年都没见了。好，接着读到下一句。In fact, keeping the brain stimulated can actually minimize the negative effects of aging on memory 
and learning ability. 事实上，让大脑持续受到刺激，能让老化对记忆力和学习能力的负面影响减到最低。那这边要介绍的是 keep 加受词加受词补语的用法，这表示使什么保持某个状态。keep 在这边就表示使处于或者使维持某个状态。那它常见的受词补语有包含现在分词、过去分词、形容词等等。我们课文里面的 keeping the brain stimulated， 它的受词是 the brain 大脑。动词 stimulate 它表示刺激、激励。好，那由于我们的大脑是受到刺激 ，the brain 跟 stimulate 之间是被动的关系，所以我们的受词补语才是用过去分词 stimulated 来补充说明大脑持续受到刺激的状态。好，接着读到课文第二部分的第一句 ：Yet another idiom that is based on mistaken belief is the expression. Stubborn as a mule. 还有另一个基于错误看法的惯用语是像驴子一样固执。Stubborn as a mule 就是用来描述某个人非常固执，十分固执。那我们这边就来补充一些跟动物有关，然后也是以 as 形容词 as 名词的形式来比喻的惯用语。那形容词前方的 as 常常省略不用。举例来说 ，Quiet as a mouse 是像老鼠一样安静，那就是非常安静。Cunning as a fox, 像狐狸一样狡猾，那就是很狡猾。Proud as a peacock, 像孔雀一样骄傲，那就表示很骄傲。Sick as a dog, 病得像狗一样，那就是病得很重。好，再来 free as a bird， 像鸟一样自由，那就表示完全自由，非常自由。好，再补充一个很有趣的用语是 happy as a clam。蛤蜊也可以算动物吧，像蛤蜊一样开心，那就是十分开心的。像它这样打开的时候开口笑。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天的单词吧。Domesticate. Dogs have been domesticated both to provide friendship and assist with work. Suggestion. We were angry at the suggestion that we had cheated. Stimulate. Doing crossword puzzles is a great way to stimulate your brain. Mistake. Don't mistake my silence for agreement, because I actually think you are wrong. Reputation. Heather has a reputation for gossiping about her classmates. Discomfort. Please call us if you experience any discomfort that lasts longer than 24 hours. Discussion starter starts now. Time now, everybody, for our discussion starter for today. Kelsey, which of the discussed idioms is your favorite? Do you know any other animal idioms? I really liked crocodile tears because I hadn't heard of this idiom before, so I thought it was really interesting to hear about. And I do know of another idiom, puppy love. So. Puppy love is usually used to describe people that are in love at a really young age, and people might say, "Oh, it's puppy love." So two teenagers when they're dating, it's puppy love, and I think it's just a really cute idiom. It is a cute idiom, but not as cute as the idiom "going at a snail's pace." I use this almost every day when I'm trying to get my daughter up and ready for school. Oh, she moves so slow; she wants to snooze for a long time, so she really moves at a snail's pace. I wish she would speed things up so she could get to school on time. And another one I can think of is "Don't look a gift horse." In the mouth, which means when somebody gives you a gift, you're not supposed to look at it and analyze whether it's a good gift or not. You're supposed to say, "Oh, what a wonderful gift! I've always wanted something like this. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you?" Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. All of us here. I am Roger. I am Kelsey. See, See you, you next, next time. time.